welcome back to another episode of Horus. This is part three, chapter four. Let's see how far we get through this one today. Home is where the heart is. Chapter four, finding a way home. The next day, I thought it might be a good time to ask about the war. Judging by the look on everyone's faces, it wasn't. Well, the war, said Mr. Silton. Barry, interrupted his wife, can I see you for a minute? And dragged Mr. Silton out of the room, leaving me with Mr. Preston. All of a sudden, Mr. Silton appeared. How about a tune-up, he said. Mrs. Silton started to make some food, and Mr. Preston was playing with the dog. <coughs> Leaving me to chat with Mr. Silton, I said that I really wanted to see everyone else, but Mr. Silton said that it wouldn't be that easy. Traveling now, especially for a robot, is complicated. Go back to the house, you could even do some cleaning. Wait there and I'll work out a way to get you to each of them. I told him that I couldn't get into the main house because the hallway ceiling had collapsed. I have just the thing, said Mr. Silton, as he pulled some sort of card out of his pocket. If you can get into the caves under the house, you can use this security pass to get into the old man's laboratories. You can get into the main house that way. I was so excited, I would be able nice. to get back into my old room, I said thanks, and yeah. made my way to the front door. Also, I think you might be able to help us out, said Mr. Silton, but we'll meet up back at the old man's house in a couple of days, you head there and we'll see you soon. Okay. <clears throat> I still think there's more stuff I can do this way. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. The huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside. So we can travel. I don't know why I didn't think about that when I was first coming around here. <laughs> like it took me a second to wrap my brain around this, this gravity to find stuff. There's a little I took brain the twister though. Boat to the old man's estate. It's all twisting around. It's really cool. Okay. Okay. That's the basketball. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> That's funny shit right there. Here now. I was wondering how I to get up here. Like honestly, I tried to get over here across the water. I wonder if you can do that. Let's find out. Yeah. further electricity that's cool and X he looked more and more confused as he read all this but eventually he finished by saying well I hope that made more sense to you than it did to me Too heavy. See what else these gloves can do, said Mr. Silton as he flipped through the manual. He actually looked quite excited when he explained that holding X while walking into or under a falling thing would allow me to catch it. I must admit, I was then really happy when he suggested we make it a game and I try to catch 10 basketballs. Siltran suggested we make it a real game, and see how quickly I could score 10 baskets. I enjoyed this so much. It felt just like the good old days. Oh. Except Mr. Siltran wasn't as forgiving as the old man. called 10 baskets, Mr. Silton gave me what called a high five. High five. 
He said I now knew everything about the gloves and I should be able to continue through the basement of the church into the house. When I asked him if he was coming with me, he just laughed and said they would catch up with me in the main hall. I was stood in a gigantic cavern. When I looked down, I was horrified to see hundreds of corpses of those things. As horrible as it sounds, my stepdaughter Chip said they were things to clean. So clean them I would. That must be the door Mr. Silton talked about. The door was exactly as Mr. Silton had described it. I just hoped that the card he had given me was the security key and not just some backstage pass. Well it opened the door. But soon an alarm went off. Something caught my eye. It's a small yellow sphere. The book next to it explained that it was a shield that would automatically take a hit for me when activated. The Y button took the shield in and out of storage, meaning I could save it for when the going got tough. It seemed that I started with two slots to carry shields, but I could upgrade to be able to carry more. Nice. If both I and the shield died in the same room, the Lazarus chip would bring us both back. It's almost as if the shield needed its sacrifice to mean something. It felt like a true friend. Proving that even the simplest of faces can bring out an emotional reaction. Hmm. Just testing it out. So now if you throw it, it turns it into trout. Bye. <laughs> 
Kind of get in the hang of the controls. should try picking that up. 
can I pick up? Wait, uh... Seeing another VCR made me wonder if there were any more recordings of the old man. I rummaged behind the TV, and was not surprised to find two more dusty old tapes. One just had hours of some strange sport. But the other had a recording of the old man. Hello, hello, came his voice again, right, this is urgent. Cancel the nanobot program immediately, all production to be stopped. Contain the remaining units in these corrosion-proof canisters. Although I'm sure it's obvious, the old man continued. We have discovered that they are essentially unstoppable and can form a controlling intelligence around any object. Need I say more? Well, at least that explained why everything moved with minds of their own. I'd never been in this part of the house before, 
but I figured I would get back to more familiar surroundings once I made it through these laboratories. confusing sometimes. shoes struggled to grip the slippery wall. I'd need to keep jumping to climb it.
Knock, knock, chuckled Mr. Silton. It's all right, we'll claim it on the insurance as accidental damage. Get me a new TV as well. I explained to them that I had found some of the old man's home videos, and the contents had shocked me. The dirty old bugger, interrupted Mr. Silton. But I didn't know what he meant. So I continued explaining about the nanobots, and Mr. Silton said we needed to get our sharpest minds on the case. Not you dipshit, he barked at Mr. <laughs> Preston, we need to rescue Heather and her mum. I wasn't sure what Mr. Silton meant by rescue, but I thought I would leave them to clear up. The weather felt cold and ominous as we made our way back outside. Before we meet the others, I need you to help me get my stolen van back, explained Mr. Silton. It's going to be dangerous, and we need someone expend uh, dependable. The equipment was heavy, but I was happy to help pack the large boxes until Preston returned with what Mr. Silton called the mean, the mean machine. machine. The milk truck. Thanks for watching this episode of Horus. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Mixer, Twittergram. Twittergram? Just follow. You know what to do. See you in the next episode.